Hello, welcome to Soma Bible Channel. Today, we are delighted to present you the Sabbath School Lesson 9 for the third quarter of the year 2024. Before we get into this lesson, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up icon to support our mission of spreading the teaching of the Bible around the world. Friends, Jesus is coming soon. The title of this lesson, Jerusalem Controversies. Let us pray. Our Heaven Father, we thank you for this lesson. We ask for your Holy Spirit to guide us and grant us understanding of this lesson. Please help us to put this lesson into practice. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our key text is found in Mark chapter 8 verse 34. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Dear listeners, a series of five controversies between Jesus and the religious leaders are recorded in Mark 2 and 3. In this lesson, when Jesus arrives in Jerusalem, he has a series of six controversies with the religious leaders. The two sets of controversies are like bookends of his earthly ministry. Each set deals with important issues in the Christian life. Jesus' instructions, even in these polemical situations, help guide believers both in fundamental issues of faith and in practical issues of everyday experience. The religious leaders come to confront, confound, and defeat Jesus, but they never succeed. Part of this lesson will include analyzing just what it is that brings people into opposition to God and considering what Christians can do to break through prejudice and speak to the hearts of those resisting the Spirit's call. Sunday Lesson The Triumphal Entry Sunday Lesson focuses on the significance of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem particularly the symbolic act of riding a donkey, as described in the Gospels. The story has two main points. Point number one, prophetic fulfillment. Jesus' actions demonstrate his prophetic powers and align with the will of God. His riding on a donkey fulfills the prophecy from Zechariah 9 verses 9 to 10, which foretold the coming of a king to Jerusalem in this manner. This act is also reminiscent of Solomon's entry into Jerusalem on a donkey when he was crowned as king. Point number two, symbolic royal entry. Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem was a deliberate and symbolic royal action. The people recognized its significance, shouting, Hosanna, which had evolved from meaning save now, to a form of praise to God. Although the situation could have escalated into a riot, Jesus simply surveyed the temple and then retired to Bethany with his disciples, setting the stage for the events of the following day. Monday Lesson A Cursed Tree and a Cleansed Temple Monday Lesson tells the story of Jesus cursing a fig tree and cleansing the temple. On his way to Jerusalem, Jesus, feeling hungry, approaches a fig tree hoping to find fruit. However, finding none, he curses the tree. This action seems strange, but it's followed by an even more dramatic event when Jesus arrives at the temple. There, he drives out the sellers and overturns tables, rebuking the religious leaders for turning a place of worship into a marketplace. The next day, the disciples notice that the fig tree has withered, and Jesus uses this moment to teach about prayer and forgiveness. The connection between the fig tree and the temple highlights a deeper message about spiritual fruitfulness and the consequences of spiritual barrenness. Let us allow Jesus to cleanse our lives, just as he cleansed the temple. Tuesday Lesson Who said you could do that? The religious leaders challenged Jesus about his authority in the temple, trying to trap him. Jesus counters by asking them whether John the Baptist's authority was from God or men, putting them in a difficult position. When they refuse to answer, Jesus declines to answer their question as well. Jesus tells a parable about a vineyard an owner, and tenants to whom he rents the field. The story Jesus tells has great similarities to the parable of the vineyard found in Isaiah 5, where God brings a charge against unfaithful Israel. Everyone would recognize the parallel, especially the religious leaders. In this story, Jesus is giving the religious leaders a solemn warning as to where their steps are heading. Seen in this light, his parable is a loving forewarning. It is not too late for them to change and avoid certain judgment. Some will repent, change, and accept Jesus. Others will not. Wednesday Lesson Earthly Duties and Heavenly Outcomes In Mark 12 verse 13 to 27, 
The religious leaders attempt to trap Jesus with two tricky questions. First, they ask him whether it's lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, hoping to catch him in a statement that could either anger the Roman authorities or alienate the Jewish people. Jesus skillfully avoids the trap by telling them to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God, teaching that believers should fulfill their earthly responsibilities while prioritizing their allegiance to God. Next, the Sadducees, who were a priestly group that accepted only the five books of Moses as scripture and who deny the resurrection, present a hypothetical scenario about a woman who marries seven brothers in succession, each dying without leaving children. They ask whose wife she will be in the resurrection, trying to discredit the concept of resurrection. Jesus responds by explaining that in the resurrection, people will not marry, and he affirms the resurrection by citing Exodus, where God identifies himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, implying that they are still alive in God's eyes. Thursday Lesson The Greatest Commandment In this passage from the Gospel of Mark, a scribe, who is part of a group typically hostile toward Jesus, shows both honesty and courage by engaging with him in a meaningful way. Unlike the other religious leaders who oppose Jesus, this scribe genuinely seeks wisdom, asking Jesus which commandment is the most important. Jesus answers by quoting the Shema from Deuteronomy, emphasizing that the greatest commandment is to love God with all one's heart, soul, mind, and strength. He then adds a second commandment from Leviticus, to love your neighbor as yourself. These commandments show the importance of loyalty and faithfulness in one's actions, not just emotional affection. The scribe acknowledges the wisdom in Jesus' answer, which sets him apart from the other leaders who were antagonistic towards Jesus. Jesus commends the scribe's understanding, saying he is not far from the kingdom of God. However, this also implies that the scribe still has a step to take, to recognize Jesus as the Messiah and follow him fully. Dear listeners, the fig tree, despite its appearance of life, bore no fruit, symbolizing those who claim to be Christians but do not live out the principles of faith in their actions. Christ's act serves as a caution to churches and believers. Many people mistakenly believe they are good Christians simply by observing religious forms or focusing on their own interests without engaging in selfless service. They live for themselves, prioritizing personal gain over helping others, which is contrary to God's design for humanity. This self-centered approach is likened to the fruitless fig tree, outwardly showing signs of life, but lacking the true substance of faith and obedience. Jesus makes it clear that such hypocrisy is detestable to him, and he warns that those who claim to serve God but do not bear the fruit of good works are more guilty than those who openly sin. This is the end of lesson. May God bless you as you continue to study the Word of God so that you can keep growing in your relationship with Him. Amen.